from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. New techniques supplement, but they never supplant the wisdom that gets contained in books and the power of the imagination that they can create and, and feed. So that's the idea, to stimulate discussion. Obviously when you work with a collection that documents uh, the medieval world and then the explosion of knowledge that's created by printing, we actually confront a, a large number of books, at least in Western Europe, uh, that have profound impact on the world that actually shaped the way in which people thought and lived. It's hard to point to one philosopher as the philosopher that everyone ought to read, but when you're defining it as books that shaped the world, who, who was the author of so much of this? And I think it has to come down to Aristotle. Now Plato was of course a great idealistic thinker who's inspired people intermittently throughout the ages. But Aristotle affected the entire language of, uh, through which almost all of the, what we now call the liberal arts were expressed. I mean, he, was, he wrote um, uh, political philosophy, he wrote uh, moral philosophy, he wrote historical, and even social analysis. And he was a philosopher of, that has a sort of practical, the concept of the golden mean, the idea that you're, you take something in between extremes rather than, the, than either extreme analysis. And the whole concept of the dialogic culture of a theology that could be explained in human words and in, in rational form, all of that was central to Western uh, civilization and, uh, and has spread more widely through the world. For me, there are sort of two strains that are particularly of interest in this regard. The first is the Justinian Codes, the old Roman law. And these books were uh, very, very important in the ancient world. They enabled um, free flow of commerce, mostly, and uh, really helped to uh, unify the world of trade. Then they were rediscovered several years after having been lost uh, in, the, in the more modern European context and influenced much of European law as it developed, including ultimately our own law through England. Obviously, uh, books of religious uh, thought, uh, the Bible, whether it be uh, the original Vulgate or the King James, uh, the Koran, the Torah, uh, those books establish a certain uh, culture and poetry and language and ideology that obviously has an impact on the world. But if we look at other works, especially if we're talking about the impact of printing in uh, Western Europe, there are works that emerge that are either uh, priority in the history of science. So I would say Vesalius's uh, study of the human body was fundamentally important to medicine. I think the release of Copernicus's uh, study, uh, Revolutionibus, which actually finally provides us with a sun-centered universe is profoundly important. Uh, you can go to Newton and Descartes, you can go to Locke. There are moments in uh, a thought that fundamentally alters the way in which people govern themselves. You could argue that the Federalist Paper, which is uh, certainly the most important political writing in America in the 18th century, uh, shapes the Constitution that we still talk about today. My list of books that shape the world uh, starts with two American books. One is Henry David Thoreau's Walden, and the second is Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. Each of these books uh, had an impact in later generations. Uh, Thoreau was established as an individualist who had kind of an anti-government take, uh, but he also was a pacifist. And his uh, worry about nonviolence, uh, published in an earlier essay, was used in later uh, centuries. Rachel Carson's book uh, really established her as a leader in the environmental movement. When you think about books that really shaped the world, um, you don't tend to think of something that we now look back on today as a charming little pair of operas, uh, The Barber of Seville and The Marriage of Figaro. But in fact, 
the play that was behind those two stories by Beaumarchais um, basically had a serving man outwitting a noble. And it was alarming to the French court at the time and banned for a while. You may remember that Mozart was originally discouraged from doing The Marriage of Figaro because of that play being considered sedition. Um, there are those who think that it actually had that effect and helped foment the French Revolution. And then you get the age of the novel making a comeback in the 1800s all over the world. So you see Tolstoy, Dostoevsky in Russia. Nobody can resolve uh, what are the 10 or the 100 or the 1,000 books that uh, she most defined and shaped our world. But the pur purpose of this exercise is for us to better think about how important they are, how important they are in our own lives, how important they are in the whole broader life of humanity, and how rich the variety, and yet how important the contents of the books that shape not just our nation, but our world. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.